Yo, what up? It's your boy, Mr. E. And today, we're going to learn about positive rational numbers. Now, these words have been thrown around a lot as we've been learning how to add and subtract fractions and decimals. But today, I wanted to dive a little deeper on what these words mean and specifically what each individual word means. So we're going to start by taking a look at the word positive. Now, you have probably heard the word positive before. We talk about positive and we're talking about feelings or emotions, having positive feelings. Uh, you may have heard of it with COVID testing, a positive or a negative COVID test. Uh, you may have even heard of positive when it comes to blood types. I have a very rare blood type. I'm AB positive. Really? I'm IB positive. IB positive, they ain't touching me with no needle. But today, we're going to talk a little bit about positive when it comes to numbers, and specifically on a number line. So let's say we had a number line here, and we have the number zero in the middle. So any numbers to the right of zero, like one, two, or three, are gonna be considered positive numbers. And they're considered positive numbers because they are greater than zero. So positive numbers are numbers that are greater than zero. Thinking about the opposite of what a positive number would be would be a negative number. And these are numbers to the left of zero, so negative one, negative two, negative three. And these are numbers that are less than zero. We don't really have to worry too much about negative numbers, but I did want to show you guys what the opposite of a positive number is. So we'll be focusing on numbers to the right of zero on the number line. The next word we need to talk about is the word rational. And rational may be a word that you don't recognize as well. So help us learn about the word rational. We're going to get into a time machine and go a couple years back. Okay, not that far, but back to the kindergarten days when we were first learning about numbers. You first learned about natural numbers. So these are numbers like one, two, three, four, five, like when you're first learning how to count, okay? So natural numbers are just like my, my old uh, mentor teacher would say, Elmo <laughs> numbers. So numbers that are very basic we learned when we were in kindergarten. The next type of numbers are whole numbers. And these numbers are a lot like natural numbers, but the number that gets added is zero. And it's actually quite interesting. The number zero didn't get added into mathematics for years and years and years and years. Um, so zero is considered a whole number, but it's not considered a natural number. Now, as you see, I'm starting to create somewhat of a Venn diagram. So if the circle is within another circle, that means all natural numbers are whole numbers. And as we move on to the next one is integers. And integers are whole numbers and natural numbers as well. But we now start to introduce negative numbers, okay? So negative numbers, again, are numbers that go to the left on the number line of zero or that are less than zero. Again, they still have to be whole numbers though, okay? So we have to have, we can't have fractions, we can't have decimals. And then the next part of our Venn diagram is rational numbers. And rational numbers include fractions, they include decimals, they can be numbers that terminate, which means they have an ending, or they're non-terminating, but they're numbers that repeat over and over again, like one third, it goes over and over and over again. So integers are considered rational numbers, whole numbers are considered rational numbers, natural numbers are considered rational numbers. Let's talk a little bit about what the opposite of a rational number would be. And that'd be an irrational number. And here are a couple examples of irrational numbers. The number pi, the number e, and the square root of two. These are numbers that actually go on and on and on forever. They have no end, so they're called non-terminating, but they don't repeat or they don't have a pattern that they follow. So these numbers just go on and on and on. In fact, there's a YouTube video of an 11 year old who had memorized like a, a significant amount of numbers for pi. Um, it was pretty crazy, but I, it just it's a number that just goes on and on and on and on. So when we put all these numbers together, or these words together, we can have this definition for positive rational numbers. They're any whole number, fraction, or decimal greater than zero. They can re be represented by P over Q, where P and Q are whole numbers, and Q does not equal zero. The reason why Q cannot equal zero is because we cannot really divide things by zero. Have you ever asked Siri, what is something divided by zero? Hey Siri, what's zero divided by zero? Imagine that you have zero cookies, and you split them evenly among zero friends. How many cookies does each person get? See, it doesn't make sense. And Cookie Monster is sad that there are no cookies. And your friends are sad because they don't exist. Oh wow, this escalated quickly. 
Yeah, Siri totally wrecked me there. Um, but so any of these numbers we can represent with P over Q, which is a ratio. And you'll learn a lot about ratios next year as you go into sixth grade. But the word ratio is actually in the word rational. So we're just making ratios out of these types of numbers. Here are a couple examples where we have some numbers and we're gonna turn them into ratios. So zero, we could represent as a fraction by saying zero over one. Really, we could put any number in the um, denominator and it still would be zero because any number that is over, that zero is over it, that means that it's going to equal zero. So zero over two, zero over a hundred, zero over a million, that's still gonna equal zero. Then we move on to the number six. Six, we could represent as six over one. And any number over one will just be itself. And that is the identity property. The next number, we have a fraction that gets included. So we have two and one third. We could easily turn two and one third into an improper fraction by multiplying the denominator by the whole number and adding the numerator, giving us seven over three. And the final number we have is seven tenths. And remember, when we talked about changing a our decimal into a fraction, we just say it over and over again, zero and seven tenths, zero and seven tenths, seven tenths. Seven tenths would be our ratio or our fraction that we could turn it into. So basically, positive rational numbers are just numbers, our whole numbers, fractions, and decimals that are greater than zero. And what we should see with these numbers is that we should feel very familiar with adding and subtracting any of these types of numbers. We could have a whole number with a fraction. We could have a decimal with a fraction. We could have two decimals. It really doesn't matter. We should feel very comfortable adding and subtracting these numbers. So I hope this video was helpful. Hopefully you'll get a lot of practice with positive rational numbers so you can get a hundo on your next test. We love you guys. We miss you. And I'll see you later. Bye.